And my prayer for all of us is that it's not going to be a year filled with overwhelm and over worry and over stress. It's going to be a year filled with peace in the chaos. It's going to be a year filled with mamas who are surrendered instead of going after perfection. And it's going to be a year of us doing this life together, seeking the Lord together and watching him bring community all across the country and watching him move in our children's lives and their relationships with him and then within our own relationship with him. Hey there, you're listening to the Girls Talking Life podcast and I'm your host, Johanna. If you're like me, you love time with friends. I always leave feeling encouraged, inspired to try something different, or I've learned something new. So why not continue to grow even when we can't be with our girlfriends? We're not made to do life on our own. So in each episode of this show, I'll bring you a girl and her story to give you refreshing ideas to stir your soul. Let's walk this road together. Are you ready to talk life? Hey there, you are listening to episode number 124 of the Girls Talking Life podcast. In case you missed it, we spent the summer talking all about friendship. In short, bingeable episodes, my guest host, Jill E. McCormick, and I shared biblical truth and our own experiences to help you grow in your friendships. Those are episodes number 114 to 123, and you can find the link to the whole series in the show notes. Today, I'm jumping back into my traditional interview-style show, talking with my new friend, Kara Snyder. She's the author of Carline Mom, 100 Days of Encouragement for the Mama Who Gets Everybody Everywhere. And Karis is doing just that. She is giving us encouragement in this busy season of back to school, fall sports and activities, and the many car lines that we are starting to find ourselves in. If back to school has your head spinning, or if you feel overwhelmed by the demands of parenting in this season, or if you are struggling to find time with God, this episode is for you. Karis Snyder is a Christian communicator who shares the hope of God as a speaker, writer, certified life coach, and podcaster on her weekly show, Carline Conversations. Everything she and I talk about can be found on girlstalkinglife.com. Here is our conversation. Hello, Karis. Thank you so much for coming on Girls Talking Life. Thank you for having me today. I would love for you to introduce yourself to listeners and just let them know a little bit about who you are. Absolutely. So I am a wife and a mom. I've been married to my husband for 19 years. We're going to celebrate 20 in 2024. So that is going to be fun. And then as a mama, I have two daughters, one who is a ninth grader in high school. I have another daughter who is in fifth grade. They very much love sports and I love being their mama. It's so funny. I grew up with brothers and then God gave me two girls. So, you know, he, he likes to do things that way, but I uh, live in the state of Alabama. So if anyone hears that Southern kind of twang in my voice, that is, is why you are hearing it. I am a Southern girl and, uh, yeah, I'm a speaker. I'm an author, certified life coach, podcaster, and I uh, just grateful to have the opportunity to just share hope and encouragement. However, however God allows me to do that. Thank you. You and I are so much alike. I, I have two girls. Okay. And then my husband and I, same, we'll celebrate our 20th year together next summer. I was about to say when, what is your month? What is that? Uh, June. Okay. Yeah. April 24th for us. Okay. Well, congratulations on that lovely milestone. Yeah. Yeah. You too. Karis, you are the author of Carline Mom, 100 Days of Encouragement for the Mama Who Gets Everybody Everywhere. Mm. And I would just like to start off reading a little passage from your book, because I think it'll just put us all on the same page and thinking (laughs) in the same, same mindset here. You say, there are days when driving seems never ending. You move through multiple lines in the morning from one side of the city to the other. Your afternoons double in the amount of time you sit and wait. From the waiting, you move to more hours of driving back and forth. You get one kid to practice, dropping the other one off. After going back to school to get the homework that was forgotten, and by the time everyone is to their set locations, it's time to begin driving once more to pick up everyone up to get home for dinner, bath, and bed. Hmm. I feel like that just puts us all on the same page with the overwhelm and the chaos that we can be experiencing. So tell me a little bit about your motherhood journey and then why you wanted to write this book. 
Yes. So, you know, for me with my motherhood journey, and some of you may relate to this as well, it was not easy. You know, we struggled to get pregnant. I had some infertility issues and I just, I desperately wanted to be a mama. And for a little while, you know, I put myself under some shame for that because I struggled, you know, and I thought that I was doing something wrong. I, you know, was causing a problem and it wasn't that. I just, sometimes our bodies needed some help. And so when I got pregnant with my first daughter and, and had her and, you know, I graduated with a child development degree. So I was like, I have got this. I've got being a mom down pat. I've already raised, helped raise other people's children. Surely it's going to be by the book. Right. And we all know it is never always by the book when it comes to our own children. And, you know, starting out for me, I was very anxious. I dealt with some postpartum depression as well, not telling anyone, you know, again, we hide under that shame, don't we? You know, we think, oh, there's no one else that can understand this struggle. There's no one else that is going through this. So I had to work through a lot of that, a lot of, you know, of that anxiousness, wondering what if, what if something happens to her? What if I let her you know, out of my sight. And so this process of motherhood just began to be pulling back these layers of how do I release control when I'm really not in control? God is in full control and he has allowed me to be a mama. He's allowed me to come into this role. So he's going to help me. He's going to help me know the things, you know, that I need to do. He's going to help me one step at a time. It's it's not going to be easy and it's not always going to go the same way it goes for everyone else. And so starting out as a mom, I had to work through some of those things mentally. I had to deal with uh, a lot, like I said, overcome a lot of anxiety in my life. And, and then I did end up having my, my second daughter, my, my youngest, my oldest is Zoe. My youngest is Allie. And, you know, our kids, I don't know about you, but my daughters are completely different. Like their personalities are different. They're absolutely right. Their learning styles are different. You know, my, my youngest man, her middle name is Grace. And it's funny because I'm like, I need to give lots of grace here, you know, (laughs) watching her grow up. But it, I also think in this motherhood journey, and I would love to hear your thoughts on this too. It's like I see, see the Lord in all of his personalities. You know, I see him in all of his character and how, how he loves us and how he's fun and how he's, you know, he's just has a focused plan for us and we can trust him. You know, we can see a lot of that through our children, but even as being moms, we learn that about him. And, and I, I'm trying to learn even now as they continue to grow up how to let go and trust, how to have conversations with them, but also how not to do this mom thing alone, because it is so easy for us to want to pull back and be alone. And I think it may go back to that voice of shame. It may go back to, you know, wondering, am I enough? Am I doing this right? Did God really get this right by asking me to be a mom? So that's kind of, I'm learning. And that kind of led me into wanting to write Carline mom devotional. Cause I do think, like you said, we are all feeling overwhelmed and, and overstressed and over worried. And, and, you know, God just wants us to be in his overflow. He wants us to let him lead and guide us and know that he loves us. He sees us and, and it, we can trust him in this season. We can trust him and what, what he's called us to. And so living my life and a lot of car lines, which let me tell you, the car line can be a little crazy around where, where I am at. Um, I have learned a lot of lessons. I have sat for many, many minutes and hours in the car line and uh, God speaks to you there. I'm sure he has spoken to many of you there. And so I just wanted to share in that journey with moms, just to, to say, Hey, from toddler to teenager, God's with us. He did not make a mistake calling you to this journey of motherhood. And we can do this together. One, one car line at a time. We can do this together. I love that. And yes, everything you said is absolutely so true. Differences in our kids and the shame that we can feel for feeling like we're not getting it right, even though we're doing the best we can. Yes. And I, yeah, I think it's good for us to talk about that because then, you know, for those listening, it lets them know, okay, I'm not the only one that thinks I'm failing everyone, you know, that, that we're kind of all in that together and then recognizing that together and saying, okay, let's not, let's not live our lives that way anymore. That's God does not hold us under shame and condemnation. So we don't have to do that to ourselves any longer. Right. Well, as we've established, it is overwhelming being a mom. Yeah. I've got school forms and sports forms and emails coming from the school and 
things from the coaches. And then now since school is in session for us, we just started last week. How about you? So we have been in for two weeks. Oh my goodness. I okay. know it's so too early. <laughs> well, when this, this episode comes out, I think everyone will be back to school. Yeah. So there are lots of communications, lots of information, things from teachers, things that, <laughs> things that are falling off my plate, Karis, things that I can't hold in my head. How do we handle this mental load? Mm. That is such a good question. And it is so true. Like you said, the papers are falling off. We forget things. There is still an envelope sitting on my counter that I was supposed to turn in the first week of school. And we are weeks in and it's still there. So I I get that. And I feel that on so many levels. So how do we deal with that overwhelm? How do we take a breath. I even, you know, you can hear me say it as we're talking about it. And I think we can do this in a lot of different ways. First of all, one thing that's been helpful for me is to just do a little bit at a time. What is possible? What can I really do a little bit at a time? You know, sometimes we want to make our to-do list 10 to 20 items long, right? Me that's too, me. <laughs> right? Me too. And even I will add something on my to-do list that I did that I forgot to put on my to-do list so I can just take it off. So I feel like, yes, anyone else? So I feel Definitely. like I've accomplished something. Yes. So I think one thing we can do instead of expecting ourselves to get it all done in one day, because we can't, we cannot do all the things in one day. What can you do? What is physically possible for you to do in one day? Looking at your schedule, is it three things? Is it five things? I, I wouldn't put more pressure on yourself than to do three to five and do those things. And then if there's extra time, do that. Go ahead and do that. So I think that's one way that will help us with the overwhelm. I think another thing that will help us with the overwhelm, and I know it's easier said than done, and maybe even that first task is easier said than done, but it's finding those moments of pause with the Lord to just get in his word, you know, and it may be where, where in this season you're in, you may only have 10 minutes. You may only have 15 minute, minutes. Maybe you are, are so exhausted when you get up in the morning, it's at night when you need to spend that time with him. So you look at what you can do morning or night in the car line, even where you can pause and just take in his word because friends, it is life giving. I mean, his word, we can still apply it to our lives all these thousands of years later. So finding that time to read a scripture every day, to spend that, that those moments of, with him, to let him refresh your soul. I think that helps too. And I think honestly, another thing that will help us is community. Who are those, those ladies in your tribe, you know, in your mama tribe that you can be honest with and you can say, Hey, this is a hard day or I feel overwhelmed, you know, and, and to just kind of share that load together to be arm bearers together, you know, when we're having a hard day, it may be you today where you reach out to them and you share and they encourage you. And then the next day it might be them. And then they know they can come to you and you're going to pour into them. You're going to let them share. You're going to be a safe place for them, but then you're going to lift them up. So I think when we are doing this motherhood journey together, we are not going, it not going to fall under that temptation to want to hide, to want to listen to that voice of shame, because then we realize, oh, I'm not alone. My friends get what I'm going through and they're going to walk this journey with me. So maybe just looking at one of those three things will help with that overwhelm. And then listen, sometimes you just got to go grab the chocolate that is hiding or <laughs> no one else can find it. Go hide in your bathroom for about five minutes, eat the chocolate and this start over. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> and one thing about community that I think helps is if you are willing to be the first one to say, mm. Hey, I'm struggling here. That's so good. You can open the door for other people to feel comfortable to do that too. That's so good. Why do you think it's so hard for us to be the first one? Huh, we don't want to admit it. God. Right? Yeah. I got it all together. I'm fine. Yeah. But then when we admit it and we let each other know that we don't, you know, this happened a few years ago when I was kind of coming out of my battle with anxiety and depression and my, my daughter, my oldest daughter was much younger then. And, and we were having a play date with some friends and the mama friend asked me, how are you doing? And I didn't say I'm fine. I wanted to, 
but I just, I knew this was a moment that I had to be honest. And I told her, you know, I'm not, I'm struggling. I'm having a, a hard time with some anxiety, some depression. And you know what? She said, me too, me too. And it was like this, this ice was broken and we were both like, I didn't know you were struggling, but I'm so glad to know that I'm not the only one. So I love that you said that to be first. I think that is really, really powerful. I feel like no matter what topic I am listening to a podcast on or what book I'm reading, that the answer to that struggle is always more time in God, God's presence and his word. And you've already mentioned it. So Karis, in this chaos that we've been talking about, how do we do it? How do we get that time with God? Yes. Yeah, so like you said, it, there's the answers are always there with him. And, and in that answer, it may not always be what we want, but he will always answer us. He will be gentle and he'll meet us where we are. And I think, you know, we've touched a little bit on this already, but deciding when and how you're going to spend that time with the Lord, you know, we have to be intentional. I'm intentional about setting my alarm to get up for work. I'm, I'm intentional about uh, what I'm going to cook for supper at least two or three days a week. You know, I mean, I'm intentional about getting my kids to school, getting them to practices. You know, I have to plan all that out. So I think maybe we need to be intentional about when am I going to spend time with the Lord? Where, where am I going to make that a priority? Because if we, if we set that on our schedule, maybe you are an electric calendar person, you put it in your calendar on your phone, put that time in there. If you're a paper calendar person, put that time in there. And, and I think when you delegate that time, it's going to help you to be more intentional with it. And then something that helps me, honestly, is doing it in the mornings. I love to spend time with the Lord in the mornings before anyone in my house is up. Even my dog, I like to get up early before anybody else drink my coffee. I have to have my coffee in the morning. Mm hmm. It's got it. It has to happen. I have to have them together and to just sit there. And, you know, sometimes it's longer times of prayer. Maybe it's where I'm just crying out to God, you know, just saying, are you there? Do you hear, hear me? Do you hear my cries? You know, am I failing as a mom, just being vulnerable with, with him? So maybe there's a longer prayer time. And then there are days where there's longer time and just soaking up his word, just taking not a whole passage, but maybe that one or two Bible verse, you know, that script. And then in the Carline mom devotional, it's only one or two scriptures every day, but just taking his word and then just pausing in those moments and letting the Holy Spirit just speak, you know, and just share, helping you to learn something from that scripture. So the morning times are good for me. Um, and then I know I have friends, they'll sit in their cars in the car line while they're waiting in the afternoon or waiting for practices to be over maybe at night and they'll pick up their Bible or they'll pick up a devotional book and read in those minutes instead of scrolling on their phone, which I admit I scroll, you know, on my phone, but they'll take that time. And there's that word of intentionality Again, they're intentional. And then some of you, we, you know, we did talk about this earlier. If it's nighttime for you, if you are more of a night owl, instead of getting up early, spend that time there with him at night and just take that word in and look at it and, and just really let him kind of put that into your life, what he's wanting us to learn, how he's wanting us to see him, who he is. You know, he'll meet us. It doesn't have to be it, well, if she does morning time, I should do morning too. It, it needs to be, where does it fit your schedule? What, you know, God has given us each different personalities and different ways that we may feel more, more focused and energetic if it's morning or afternoon at night. And I think when you know that, and then you're intentional with that, just taking the, that time with God is so, so good. And then also remembering as we pray with him, it doesn't just have to end at that prayer time. And then we're done. We can talk to God all the time. We can talk to him while we're driving down the road. We can hear from him while we're listening to worship music, you know, while we're in our cars, because we are in our cars so much. So I love that we can keep that conversation going with him 24 seven. And yes, people may drive by you, seeing you talking, thinking, what is she doing? But they may relate as well. So I think realizing that as well, that it doesn't have to end at that. Amen that it can continue on. I think that I've had some, some wonderful, sweet moments with God in my car, just knowing that even though I might be alone, I'm not ever alone because he's there with me and that coming and that going. 
I love those small pockets of time when you just are waiting unexpectedly, or maybe yeah. you knew you were going to have a half an hour before practice was over to grab a book, grab your Bible, just be in prayer. That is so yeah. good. And yeah. here I'm going to show you, I'm showing Karis my to-do list has more than three or five items on it. <laughs> but the very first thing when I write out my list for the day is my Bible. Love I that. do it in the morning too. And one of the things that I try to do is to ask God to order my day. Love that. So that if I don't get to everything on my list, it's okay. It was his timing. Mm-hmm. And if I, you know, am feeling overwhelmed about all I need to get done or the running here and there, you know, I ask for his peace in that. Yeah. That's really good. I just saw this quote from Elizabeth Elliot and it says, the only thing you have to do today is the will of God. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, man, that takes away so much pressure right? because, you know, we feel like we have to do so much, but like you said, he'll order our steps. And if it doesn't happen, it's okay. There's freedom, right? There's freedom in that when we Absolutely. can kind of grab a hold of that. Wow. Another thing is on top of the busyness, I now have a driver. Oh. my family, <laughs> a student driver. So there's even more to pray about. Wow. Yes. <laughs> I'm coming. I'm behind you. My, my daughter's turning 15 soon. So <laughs> you may have to give me some encouragement there. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, we touched on this and you gave us an example about how a friend opened up to you. I feel like community is so important. Girls talking life. That is what we are about here. Yeah. Do you have any other examples of how time with friends has just helped you as a mom? Yes, I I will say this. I'm an introverted person. And if anyone else is an introvert, I get the struggle, right? Okay. Me too. It, yeah. It can be hard sometimes for us to open up. And extroverts, I'm sure you love to be around people, but it, can, it may be hard for you as well. You know, I think we all wonder, will they reject me? Will they accept me? What if they do know my struggles? Are they still going to let me in? So we all have those questions that we have to work through. And I know what it has been like for me in those seasons where I have closed myself off and hidden myself away from community. And those are hard. Those are hard seasons and it can feel very lonely, but I, I know what it feels like when I, it feels like you're taking a risk because you don't know what's going to happen. You know, you don't know how, how they're going to accept you. Are they going to love you? But when you go in and you just, you know, you begin to be a part of a group. Maybe you meet some moms through some activities that your kids are involved with. Maybe you s- discover a a mom small group within your community and you've never met any of these moms ever in your life, but you feel that tug that you need to go. When we do that, when we have community, it is life changing. Um, I know for me in community, I, there are those couple of friends that I have, if I'm having a hard day or, or, you know, maybe a hard moment, or I feel discouraged, I can reach out to them. I have to push through that lie of, oh, I don't want to bother them. Oh, this is going to be a burden to them. I've got other things to work through. But if I'll reach out to them and share that with them, they will encourage me. They'll say, hey, I'm praying for you. But then they will always say, thank you for telling me. Mm-hmm. Thank you for letting me in. Yeah. And and that's always a powerful reminder for me because then it fights that lie of the enemy that I was going to bother them. It's like the Lord is kind of letting me know, nope, no, you're not going to bother them. Um, and so sometimes I, I find myself back in those seasons of pulling away. So then I have to push, I have to push through that. And I have to know this is what the Lord wants. Galatians 6, 2 tells us that we are to bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. So we can't bear one another's burdens if we are not together, if we are not doing life together. And, you know, another part of community is it helps us to have fun and enjoy being a mom and and enjoy, you know, that's not all that we are. That is a part of what we do, but there is so much more to us. So when we have that community of other mamas where we're joining in together and we laugh together and we cry together or we, you know, we're bonding on something else. It takes us just even more into a connection of community where you do continue to build trust with one another. You do celebrate the wins together. You know, you are involved in all those parts of life together. So I know it feels risky, but for me, I think it is all, it has always been worth the risk when I will put myself out there and go after community. And then when we understand how it feels to us, that it feels like a risk, 
inviting other moms in because there are moms out there. They, that they, maybe they just moved to our town or maybe they're brand new to, they have a kindergartner or they have a new high schooler and they don't know how to come into the community. And sometimes when we offer that hand of invitation to them, how powerful is that to let them know, Hey, we love you and we want you to be a part of this group. So I think it can go both ways, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. I love that you said that. Invite that new mom in. Yeah. I am getting ready to go away for a couple of nights with a group of girlfriends. And we planned it a while ago and we thought all school will be in session. So it'll be fine. We'll be, (laughs) (laughs) this is a perfect time to plan it. Perfect time. And things are crazy. Like we've been talking about and we kind of went back and forth and we were like, the timing on this is really not great. We didn't realize then when we planned it, (laughs) but it is so necessary and needed and our families will be fine. Our kids will be okay. We need to make a little bit of arrangements up front, but that time away is going to refresh us in a way that we really need right now. Mm. I love that. And I really do kind of love that you planned it at the beginning of the school year because (laughs) it's going to, it's going to be great. Like when you go away and y'all are together and you're laughing, maybe wondering what on earth is happening at home <laughs> right now. But like you're saying, it helps us as moms to release control. It helps us to, to know that we don't have to do all the things for all the people and they're going to be okay. And they're going to, maybe they learn how to be a little bit more independent, or maybe they, you know, they learn something about themselves that they didn't know was there, but they're going to be, they're going to be fine. And everybody is going to be better from it. So maybe even though you're like now thinking, what have we done? Maybe (laughs) back then God was like, Hey, this is going to be great for everybody. Right. And dad can drive the carpool. They need to know, they need to experience all of that as well. Yes. You speak to moms and I just know that you have some kind of back to school or lunch packing or carpooling hack that we need to hear about. I would say, man, back to school hack. If you can get your schedule together in your head, kind of, and and when I say schedule, I always like to say flexible schedule, be flexible in your schedule. Ideally, what is your day is going to look like every day? And I have to write it down. I am old school pen to paper person. So get that written out, get all of your kids activities that are in there. But I also would encourage you and challenge you within that schedule, make room for no. And when I say make room for no, I mean, make room for nothing. Don't say, don't fill your time with so many yeses that you feel like you can't breathe. You feel like everything is about to fall in a moment. Be intentional with the no as well, because we don't have to do all the things in our brains. Sometimes thinks that it has to be doing something. And if we're not, we're doing something wrong. You're not being intentional with no also lets our kids know they don't have to fill all their time. They don't have to fill up their schedule. So figure out a place there for no. And in the place of that, no, you're spending time with your family. Maybe you're watching a movie. Maybe it's your family meal together, your dinner together. So I think that is helpful. And then When you said school lunches, I'm still trying to figure out the hack for this. So just so you all know, (laughs) I'm still trying to figure that one out. I pack lunches every morning uh, and that works. I mean, that works for us. Sometimes we forget to go to the grocery store and you just get whatever is in the pantry and hey, it's, it's okay. Like it's, (laughs) it's, it is totally fine to do that. But I think as well, going back to, and I know this may sound repetitive, but sometimes we have to hear it multiple times to get it in our hearts make that time for the Lord, spend that time with him. What, what rocks my world is that the God of this universe wants to spend time with me. He wants to hear from me. He, he doesn't want to just hear all the good stuff. He wants to hear the messy stuff, the burdens, the hurt, the pain. I don't have to come to him with, with just the right words or just the right prayer. I can come as I am. Um, so having that vulnerability and transparency with him as you get back to school, as you go back through all these things, lay those anxieties at his feet, lay those requests at his feet, surrender your time to him. And in that, he's going to take you through this school year. And my prayer for all of us is that it's not going to be a year filled with overwhelm and over worry and over stress. It's going to be a year filled with peace 
in the chaos. It's going to be a year filled with mamas who are surrendered instead of going after perfection. And it's going to be a year of us doing this life together, seeking the Lord together and watching him bring community all across the country and watching him move in our children's lives and their relationships with him. And then within our own relationship with him. What wonderful encouragement. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. I love, I love all of that, <laughs> especially time with God. We, we've been over this one. No, but it matters. It matters. Everything else will fall into place if you get that one piece. Mm, so good. Yeah. Karis, last up, I would love to know what your favorite five are. Five things that you are wearing or watching or maybe drinking right now that are just your favorite things. Okay. So here we go. Here are, here are some of my, my top five. I just uh, came, I'm a mascara fan. I love, to, I may not wear any other makeup, but I will wear mascara all the time. Um, so my favorite one is right now is L'Oreal Voluminous Mascara. Mm. I like that one. Um, my favorite thing that I am eating right now, I'm a big protein bar fan. I like protein bars. So the Quest cookie dough protein bars are really good. I think I've seen those at the store. Have you seen those? Okay. Mm -hmm. They, they taste good. Like it doesn't taste chalky or, or anything like that. Like it actually tastes good. And I told you guys that I'm a huge coffee drinker. So my favorite creamer right now is Nestle creme brulee. Ooh. Nestle creme brulee. If you find it, stock up on it because it's really hard to find. So that, and, um, as a speaker, author, you know, we have to have a good website. So I just recently came across um, a website place where you can put your domain and create your website. And it's called Squarespace. Very user-friendly. I am not technology gifted at all. And I can navigate Squarespace. So something to look for if you are trying to um, build a new website. And then for jewelry, I, I wear this necklace all the time. It's just a little cross necklace. I can wear it in the shower, in the pool, but I get jewelry from this place all the time. It's they're local to me, but she's been in uh, Paris fashion week, New York fashion week. They're called Holland and Birch, mm -hmm. Holland and Birch. And her jewelry is just unique. And they're very classic and her testimony of what God has done in her life. It just adds to purchasing from her. So I would say those are going to be my, I think that's five. I think I did five. five. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. is terrific. And I love your necklace. It's just nice and Thank simple you. and beautiful. Yes. Yeah, I love it. And you mentioned your website. So where can we find you online? Let us know. Yes. So my website is just my name, Karis Snyder, C-A-R-I-S-S-N-I-D-E-R.com. And then also if you're on social media, I'm at Karis Snyder at Instagram and Facebook. I love to connect in all three of those places. And I actually, when you subscribe to my email list to my website, I have a freebie right now for moms, like a back to school uh, kit survival kit oh, yeah. for mamas. Yeah. So you get that. I love to give freebies away. Um, so that's the one that I have right now. So I'd love to connect. Perfect. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Well, Karis, it has been lovely talking with you and getting to know you a little bit better. And you are just a wealth of encouragement for moms in the thick of it here as we embark back to school. And thank you so much for yeah. coming and sharing with us. Uh, thank you for letting me come on and be a part of your, your show. For listening. I hope you loved getting to know Karis just like I did. Her new book, Carline Mom, has just released into the world. If you're a busy mom looking for a way to draw closer to Jesus, grab her devotional and know that you are not alone and there is peace for your overwhelm. Everything we talked about and all the ways to connect with Karis can be found in the show notes for today's episode. I mentioned at the end of summer that we'd be starting a marriage series and that is still coming. It'll just be a little bit later this fall. Friend, don't let the conversation stop when the show is over. Share your story and start your own conversations with the girls in your life. I'll see you back here in two weeks. Thanks for tuning in.